What's up everyone, welcome to the video, it's Tizzer and um, UFC 284 was last night slash this morning and um, I'm very tired to be honest but uh, it was worth it, I enjoyed the card um, the early prelims were bad, the prelims weren't very good either but the main card was really really good and it saved UFC 284 and the Perth crowd was insane and um, in this video I'll be breaking down every single fight and what my thoughts are on the fight um what i liked what i didn't and um all that good stuff but um what would i rate the event out of 10 i'd probably give it an 8 the pre the early prelims were really boring to be honest and um, the prelims were bad as well but the main card was one of the best i've seen in a while it had me hyped from the start to the finish so um i really can't complain and it just kind of reminded me of prime ufc you know we've only we've had a few stinker events recently and um, it was nice to get some high quality fights in there, you know, guys that actually can fight. And um, obviously the main event was amazing, but we'll get to that. We're going to go from this first fight to the final fight. So, um, yeah, we're just going to start off with Zabira Tugor versus Elvis Brenner. Um, this fight was an absolute robbery. Um, Zabira, you shouldn't miss weight, I guess. That's your lesson, you know. Did he lose that on the scorecards because the UFC told uh, the judges to make him lose because, you know, he's missed weight. Probably, yeah. I think um, that played a massive part because he won every round. You know, there's an argument he maybe didn't win the third. But, um, yeah, no, nah, he won that fight. Um, Elvis does look kind of hyped, though, you know. Um, I'm not saying he can, like, be a champion or anything or uh, probably not even a content, like, a lightweight ranked person. But um, he's kind of interesting to watch fight, you know. He went for a spinning back fist and it landed, you know. That's kind of... Uh, ballsy moves we like to see in the UFC. Um, he tried to make it interesting, but he just struggled against uh, Zabira's boxing. I think he was a bit more rangy, and then um, he was just like teeing him with a jab. So yeah, that was um unfortunate for him. But um, was it a good fight? Mm, it's kind of boring, not really. Um, you know, Zabira he might be looking at getting cut after missing weight like that. But um, yeah, I have no idea. So um. Yeah, not the best fight and um, not a good way to start the card, but um, it got better. So moving on up, Blake Bowder versus Shane Young. Um, obviously Shane Young, the Aussies wanted him to win. There wasn't a full crowd by here, you know, it's kind of starting to fill up by now. And um, Blake Bowder used his wrestling to get the win here. Um, it looked quite good in the first round. He took Shane Young down and um, oh my god, these guys are slow. That's what I have to say. It was literally I thought I was watching a 0.75 times speed. They punch like light heavyweights with the power of like bantamweights. weights. They had no knockout power behind them. Um, Bow I think that was Bowder's debut. Um, he looked okay. You know, he kind of slowed down and he started getting pieced up in the third. And um, Shane Young's obviously got six losses and thirteen wins, so that's not a good person. You want to be doing that again. So I think Bowder probably loses his next fight if it's against someone any better than Shane Young who can stop the takedowns, and um, on the feet, yeah, he's not that good, so um, another boring fight, you know, um, the third round was kind of a, better than the others, it kind of saved the fight from being an absolute snooze fest, but um, not the best fight in the world, um, I mean, he won his debut, but, you know, he didn't make shockwaves, but, um, you know, this is the UFC, you know, fairy tales don't really happen, and um, another reason why the early prelims kind of suck, to be honest, but uh, moving on up, uh, Loma, look, Bonme versus Elise Raid. This was like the only good fight on the prelims. Um, yeah, that Loma girl, Loma, look, Bonme. Um, she was pretty good. Um, I just it went to round two. She just took her down, took her back immediately, and submitted her like she wasn't even fighting someone who knew what to do on the ground. And um, she completely exposed Elise Raid. And um, I just feel bad for Elise Raid. You know, supposedly training for this fight coming from the US, which is a really, really big flight, I think, and only to lose, like, in, like, look like it dominated, really, in that second round, um, yeah, that Loma girl was a lot better than her, she at least clearly has massive holes in her grappling, and she needs to change them, or she was going to be getting cut, because everyone's just going to take her down now, even strikers, probably, but, um, yeah, good win for Loma, um, she looked impressive, she looked like she knew what she was doing, so, um, yeah, that was pretty interesting. I enjoyed that. I thought it was good while it lasted. Um, not too bad. Um, and it was the only women's fight on the card I did notice, which is um rare. I think there's usually two or three, but um yeah, I'm not. I mean, you know, it was a good fight. So, and um, 
Moving on up, the final fight in the early prelims, Jack Jenkins versus Don Shaines. Um, yeah, Jack Jenkins, this was better, but still not that good. Um, the first round, I think, was there's a big grappling session. Um, both looked good, you know. Um, and I think this fight, to be honest, just raised the stock of both fighters, even though Shaines lost. Um, they both had moments. It looked like Shaines could win it, and then Jenkins kind of pulled it back. So, um, yeah, another good fight. Well, not no, it wasn't good, but, you know, it helped their stock. And um, they both look decent, you know. You know, they can improve. And, um, yeah, you know, the Aussie got the win, so the crowd were loving that. And, um, yeah, they were probably scared every fight was going to be like this, but it did improve, thankfully, for them. Because, um, obviously, I'm a, I'm a UK fan, so I have to wait for the main card at 3 a.m. So I'm basically damaging my sleep cycle and my health to watch this uh these fight cards so if they're not worth it i kind of get really annoyed you know because that could have been uh, hours spent sleeping in bed and not feeling like a zombie the next day because i'm very tired today but that's just the things we do for a ufc nowadays and um on to the prelims jamie malarkey versus francisco prado um jamie malarkey looked good um he looked sharp um he looked good everywhere he took it to the ground um, Prado kind of gassed by the third. He wasn't really doing anything. And um, yeah, um, Prado didn't look that bad either. You know, I know he lost. Um, he kind of gassed, but that's kind of expected on your first fight in the UFC. I think it was his debut. And um, Malarkey looked good. Definitely raised his stock. He was good everywhere, I noticed. You know, he didn't really have a problem. I thought Prado was maybe going to give him some problems with the power on the feet. Um, but Jamie just, he just, he hung in there. He was fine. And um, yeah, he got himself... A convincing decision so uh, yeah fair play the fight was probably a bit more technical than the ones before it so it was good to watch that but um still not the most exciting fight and then Prado kept on going for spin attacks I don't really know why they were nowhere near landing um I think he's been watching some like Edson Barboza highlights maybe in his spare time but uh, anyway moving on up the card Shannon Ross versus Kill Aiton Rodriguez and um, this fight was funny um Clayton Rodriguez literally knocked Shannon Ross down with like a spin attack and um it the spin missed and um his uh Clayton's butt hit Shannon Ross in the face and knocked him over. It was quite funny. It was like a spinning bum TKO. Um but yeah this was um this was a good finish from Clayton. He looked good in it. Uh, Shannon Ross uh, shouldn't have been in there with him. And um really good finish. Uh first exciting fight on the card I'd say and it kind of set the tone for the better fights after this it was uh, mostly finishes from now on so um yeah I think this fight got the crowd pumped and it was a good fight it was only um a minute long but um you know the advert break after was uh absolutely awful but it was a good fight it was better than a three round decision so um yeah good win for Clayton and um that's unfortunate for Shannon Ross I don't know what he's gonna do moving on but um, we can look to be giving Clayton some better fighters. But anyway, yeah, moving on up, Josh Kulabau versus Melsic, uh, Badash, Badash Siren. Um, sorry about the pronunciation of that. Um, to be honest, Melsic was probably winning, and um, then he nut shotted Josh Kulabau, and he took about three minutes to um get better and um recover because um, it looked it looked like a bad shot like them um, the heel of his foot hit the cup i'm pretty sure um yeah it was a bad shot and um i i completely understand why he took the time for that and um after that josh kind of seemed quite sharp and then um they were having it they had an exchange in the second round i think and um melsic fell for fell kind of like a uh, volkanovsky in the ortega fight but i um, mean it like different angle uh Kulabau took the back really quickly, so a nice um finishing instinct from him there. And then we got the rear naked choke and um yeah, I don't know what Melsic was doing. Um he kind of wasn't really his fault, you know, it's just one of them things. He just kinda got unlucky. He was kind of winning the fight as well. But um yeah, I mean that's kind of karma for what he did at the weigh-ins and um, with grabbing Josh Kulabau by the throat and shoving him. So I mean that's kind of karma, but it was all respectful after that anyway, so Good stuff. Um, wasn't the most exciting fight, but at least it was a finish. And um, yeah, it was it was all right. Moving on up, the final prelims fight. Um, I thought this one would be a first round knockout. Tyson Pedro versus Modestas Picasas. And um, yeah, Modestas looked really good. Um, obviously he got that massive leg injury from Cali Roundtree, and he got cut from the UFC. 
and he's been on a tear in another promotion. He got two wins in a month, I think, and now he's back in. And um, yeah, he showed that he's a good fighter. And um, oh my God, Tyson Pedro has no cardio. Um, he gassed after the first round, and even in the first round, he was gassing in the last few minutes. Um, uh, to be honest, I think Modestus could have got a finish here. Um, I don't think he realized how tired Tyson was. But um, I think if he just stood in the pocket and threw punches at him, I think uh, Tyson would have gone down. He was completely gassed. Um, he did nothing the entire fight after the second round. He just threw leg kicks that landed. None of his punches landed, literally. He had, like, no big punches after round one. Um, his only significant strikes that did any damage whatsoever, in my opinion, were leg kicks. But, I mean, there's no point in investing in, like, three leg kicks around when you're gassed and they're not even thrown full force. But um, a yeah, good win from Modestus and um, Tyson really needs to improve his cardio. Otherwise, I can't see him being anyone somewhat good in the uh, light heavyweight division. So he really needs to step that up. And um, kind of a poor performance for him being such a heavy favorite. But um, he asked the UFC for you. And um, there was a guy in Modestus Buk um corner. Um, he was giving him great advice. He was a British lad. He's called Will. And um, he's another fighter. And um, he was just giving him really good advice. And um, it was clearly helping Modestus, who um is actually um kind of British as well. Um, you know, he's born and raised in Britain, I think, but um he chooses to represent Lithuania. So um was the fight it was a bit boring to be honest. Um there could have been a finish and Modestus pushed it. I just don't think he realised how easy the finish was there, but I mean I guess it's easier said than done. But um yeah, that was the prelims. Okay, not as bad as the early prelims, but um thank God the main card saved it. So um the main card opener was Jimmy Crute versus Alonzo uh, Menafield. And um, this fight was really good. I thought Jimmy Crute was going to win and I was rooting for him because, um, you know, he's young and um, I feel like he could have been something early in his career, but, you know, he kind of got unlucky. And um, this fight was really funny. Um, Jimmy Crute stand up. I said this in my prediction video. Go back and watch. Just uh, have a look at what I said. Um, I did back Jimmy Crute to win this fight by a submission in the second round or a TKO, I think. But um, I said the wrestling would be good. And, um, Jimmy Crute's wrestling is good, but I did say that Jimmy Crute's striking is terrible, and I was not wrong. I was bang on the money. Jimmy Crute's striking is so bad. How did he not get knocked out? I have no idea. Uh, men, I feel, should be disappointed that he didn't get the finish. Because, oh my God, you'd think he was just pulled off the street to fight but then when he takes it to the ground he's like one of the best he probably is like the best light heavyweight grappler maybe beside and Clive, but they fight kind of differently um jimmy crute stand-up is absolutely terrible i'd rate it a two out of ten um the fact he didn't get ko'd within like the first two exchanges is an absolute miracle in itself um he's funny to watch i was kind of laughing the entire way through stand-up exchanges but i really wanted him to win because he's a nice guy and um yeah um it was a draw um i kind of saw that coming after the um point deduction in the third round um alonzo grabbing the cage he'd already done it before and um, he stopped another takedown but jo uh, john goddard didn't do anything so it's nice he finally stepped in and deducted the point because we rarely ever see that in the ufc so i'm glad it happens because he was cheating and he deserves it because um if not crew would have got the takedown there and um you never know he could have got a finish but um yeah this fight was good good way to open the card um it was just action packed so um I can't complain and they gave it them all and they're probably gonna run it back and um who have I got on the the uh, rematch I'm gonna take Jimmy Crew I mean he's probably he might get knocked out but um you know if he improves his wrestling he'll be fine but he took a lot of damage in that fight so maybe not I don't know I might have to revise that pick closer to the date but anyway moving on. Um, from that fun fight, we had the heavyweight fight, Justin Taffa versus Parker Porter. Um, I thought it was good while it lasted. Um, I did say Taffa was going to win in the first round by KO. He won in the first round by KO. You're welcome, guys. Amazing picks as always. But um, yeah, Parker Porter just got KO'd by like a... Uh, he was coming in, he just rushed in and he got clipped by a hook. And on the way down, he could have been all right, but he got clipped by another Taffa punch. So, um, yeah, Taffa looked sharp in this. Um, his boxing was really good, to be honest. I'm impressed. And um, that is probably it for Parker Porter, unfortunately. Uh, he took the loss well. Um, but, yeah, that's probably him done from the UFC. And, um, 
yeah, that is um the end of his career probably. Not a great way to go, but a lot of legend UFC. Well, I wouldn't call Parker Porter a UFC legend. No disrespect, but um, a lot of UFC fighters do retire on a loss. It's just the way it is because they're old. But um, good win from Taffa. He looked sharp, and Porter didn't even look. Parker Porter didn't even look that bad. But um, it just so happens that he was tough as night clearly, and um, his boxing was way better. Um, I'm surprised Porter didn't grapple, but you know, um, low fight IQ, I guess. Uh, moving on up the card. This was a good fight. Um, Jack Della Maddalena versus Randy Brown. Um, obviously, I really, really like Jack Della Maddalena. His striking is uh, really, really uh, fun to watch. And um, his his mic skills, he's kind of reserved and quiet, but he's a likable guy. So he's, I think he's kind of quite promotable, you know, just as like this Australian guy who rocks up and knocks people out. Um, so, yeah, it's good for him. Um, he got an amazing finish over Randy Brown. I predicted a second round TKO. Um, it was a first round submission. I don't think anyone called the submission, but it's technically a TKO because um, on the separation, kind of on the clinch, um, he threw Jack, uh, Jack Della Maddalena for a huge right hook and a connected flush. And Randy Brown's legs literally just went like jelly. Um, completely rocked him. Could have finished it there, to be honest. But um, good wrestling, to be honest. Um, they let Randy Brown... Stay on the ground. He took a few shots. Then he rolled over, giving up his back. Jack Della Maddalena just jumped on top of him, took the back, and since he's in the rear naked choke for his submission win. So, um, yeah, uh, Jack Della Maddalena is really good. And um, good idea, you know, stopping the range by pushing him up and clinching with him. Then on the clinching exit, clinch exits, he just hit him with that massive hook. His uh, boxing's insane. And... um. He's got a real future ahead of him. Give him a top 15 opponent. Um, I think if you give him the boxers, he'll beat them pretty convincingly. Um, you know, you've got um, Neil Magny. I think he knocks him out in the first round. Um, and uh, you've got Vince, uh, Vicente Luque. I think he knocks him out as well. Um, he's just kind of like a ver worse version of Jack Della Maddalena, to be honest. But um, yeah, so that was a good fight and he got performance of the night, but um, he deserved it. So I'm happy for him. And um, yeah, good fight. Moving on up the card, February, the interim title about Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett. I had Yair Rodriguez to win a decision, but I must say, bro looked really, really good. And um, I'm a huge fan of him now. That won me over that performance. Not that I wasn't a fan already, but I just said it in stone. Um, He's really good, to be honest. Uh, Emmett had his moments. He landed some big punches. He did wobble Rodriguez. Uh, two or three times, I think. But, um, yeah, Rodriguez, man, his kicks are so good. And I said he had a good kicking game in my um, my um, prediction video. But, um, yeah, he just showed his class here. Um, he hurt Emmett multiple times in the first round with body kicks. I think the first kick he threw, he hurt Emmett to the body. And, um, obviously, if you saw the videos of Emmett weight cutting, he clearly struggles to make it, and he's old as well. So a um, big cut for him. So he's already depleted. And um, yeah, smaller. So I don't think he cuts as much. But um, yeah, is good. Um, you know, with the head movement, I was worried he might get clipped on a exchange leaving. But um, he was fine. And um, Josh Emmett got a lucky kind of like scramble takedown kind of thing. It was pretty messy. So he ended up on top after getting rocked, I think. And yeah, just on bottom. Wow. How active he was. That was so impressive. We need more fighters like that because you can actually win rounds on bottom just from doing that with the big elbows. He was really hurting Emmett. Like I could see Emmett was actually uncomfortable there. <coughs> and I'm pretty sure he was considering actually giving up his dominant position. And um, Emmett just had his arm like dangling in front of Yair. I thought he was trying to like bait him into taking an arm bar or something like that or a triangle. And Yair took it. And won. Like, I don't know why his hand was there. But, um, yeah, low f low fight IQ mistake from Josh Emmett there. Just giving uh, Yair a free submission. But um, Yair is really good off his back. I'm impressed. Um, he's tall for the division and, like, lanky. So, he's got good reach. And um, if this Volk-Islam rematch doesn't happen, um, he's fighting Volk. And um, he can be Volk, to be honest. Um, I think he's probably his worst style matchup. Uh, his range is going to be a huge problem for Volk. Um, 
because I know Max Holloway is kind of rangy, but um, he just boxes. He doesn't really kick except to the legs. And um, Yair will throw head kicks and stuff like that, crazy stuff, spinning stuff, um, spinning body kicks, stuff like that. And um, he's got really good defensive wrestling game. Um, so even if Volk like, takes him down, he can threaten him, submissions and stuff like that. And um, I do fancy his chances in that matchup. But um, we're not here to talk about that today. But um, good win from Yair. Um, he needed to win this fight. He's younger and he's got more time to be a champion. Uh, Josh Emmett would probably only win and defend once and then retire, I imagine, because he's so old. I think he's 38. But um, good win from Yair. Unlucky Josh Emmett. I still think he's a top fighter in the, the featherweight division, but he just isn't that title calibre, you know. And in my prediction video, I said he didn't really win his last two fights. And it kind of showed here, because although he had his moments, they were just moments, you know. He wasn't really dominating for a period. He just kind of won an exchange or two and hurt. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't really off his talent. It was just off his power. But, you know, that's part of his skill set, so you have to respect that. And, um, yeah, good fight. Finally, main event, what we were all waiting for, Islam Mahachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. I had Islam Mahachev to kind of win pretty dominantly by third round submission. I thought he'd latch up an arm triangle on um, short Volk, but um, I was wrong. Um, I wanted Volk to win really badly. I'm a huge Volk fan, and um, I just thought the size difference would be too much. I think if they were the same height, I think Volk would finish him, to be honest. But um, wow, Volk is good. Um, he kind of won this fight, maybe. Um, yeah, I mean you can score it uh, either way, so I'm not too mad. I'm dis. I feel bad for Volk though, um, because you could argue uh, he won three rounds, you know, because um, it comes down to that fourth round. I'd say he won it because um, even though he was in um back sitting, and um, obviously Makachev had him in the uh, the body triangle. Um, he was landing the bigger punches. He was punching over the back of his shoulder. And that won him the round. He landed a lot of them punches, probably over 50. He was speaking to Islam. He was fine. He never nearly got submitted or anything like that. And Islam kind of knew. And um, I think he was a bit disappointed in how uh, he couldn't finish Volk. And then that final round, Volk was good, man. Um, Makachev looked so tired in that final round. Um and when he dropped him, that was really good. Um, it's a shame he didn't get the win. But I think there needs to be an immediate rematch in like four months. UFC 288 main event. Because um, that hasn't been booked yet. Uh, give them like three, four months to prepare. But um, we can't have Volk going back down to February and fighting for fighting Yair after that performance, right? That is not fair. Um, we need a rematch now before Volk's too old. Um, his cardio is so good, man. So good. He looked fine after five rounds, and Makachev was so drained. Um, that weight cut definitely doesn't help. Volk barely has to cut, I imagine. But um, yeah, what a fight. Uh, it got fight in the night. No surprise. It was really good. Um, I think Volk did more damage, to be honest. I know he Makachev clipped him a few times, but um, one time he where it looked like he rocked him, he didn't. I think he just knocked him off balance in an exchange because he was kind of so straight upright. But um, a yeah, good win from Volk. Uh, sorry, good win from Makachev though. Um, you know I'm not mad or anything. I like uh, Makachev. I think he's a good fighter. But um, I mean you know, it there's the plan to beat him. Everyone thought no one could beat Makachev, but there's the plan to beat him. Um, is Makachev better than Khabib? Yeah, I think if obviously in a hypothetical world, I know they're best friends. But if Makachev fought Khabib, I think Makachev would beat him because he's got way better stand up, and um. Yeah, I think he'd win. Um, would Volkanovski beat Khabib? Yeah, I think he would. I think he probably, I think he'd win a decision. Um, convincingly, I don't think Khabib would be able to do much on the ground with him. And um, Volkanovski's striking is much better than Khabib's. Khabib's striking is nowhere near Makachev's even. And um, he looks really scared on the feet. So um, I think Volkanovski would probably be able to do it. And um, rematch, please. I've got Volk in the rematch by decision. And um, what a fight, man. What a fight. This is what the UFC is for. Uh, the main event saved... The, the main the main card saved um, the, the whole card because of the dead prelims. But, um, yeah, that were my thoughts on the fights. Um, 
you know, good card. Um, like I said, eight out of ten. The Aussie crowd was great, and um, it was pretty justifiable losing sleep and um, damaging my sleep cycle probably forever. The amount of times I've done it now, uh, just to watch this stuff live, because um, I mean, you know, this main event was one of the high, most high level matchups we'll ever see. Um, obviously we've got a fight night next week. It's Blanchfield versus um, they've just pulled out Jessica Andrade. And um, after that, we've got UFC 285, I think. We've got Jones versus Gan. I can't wait for that. It's actually got a lot of good fights on that card. And it's in Vegas too. But um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. This is a long video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, comment down below what you thought of the event. You know, I'd love to hear what you thought of the main event, how you scored that. And um, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is quite a long one. So um, yeah, I hope. This was very in depth, I think. So um, I'm hoping you guys enjoy that. And um, I'll be doing a lot of uploads on the UFC 285 week. Um, we'll get a lot of content out for that. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not crazy hyped for this next event, but um, we might make a video or two on it. But um, thank you guys for watching, and um, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, there'll be more content soon, just like I've said. And I'll see you guys in the next video.